Hi, I'm back in the old garage lab here where I've got the uh, EcoFlow uh, Pro battery here which uh, you've seen the teardown video of and if you see my recent AC transfer switch video you'll know that I was uh, going to install that to have this uh, 3.6 kilowatt hour battery actually power all three of my fridges. There's a chest freezer there and I've got a uh, the fridge over there and there's another one inside and I've actually uh, rewired them and I was going to install my transfer switch in this uh, DIN enclosure here but I I don't think so now because I think I've found an issue with it well two issues with this that um, make it really not suitable for the application that I want here so um, yeah I was actually going to use like a physical mechanical type in fact for the last like three days or whatever I have actually been using a physical mechanical timer here that comes on at uh, you know 9 a.m. in the morning so you know when the Sun uh, comes up and shuts off at like 4 o'clock so that this battery can be recharged from my solar existing solar systems that's a just a neat tri um, simple trick you can do uh, without having anything um, fancy you can just have it come on during the day and if, if the Sun's out it's you know it would only like charge slow charge at 400 watts or whatever um, over that time and anyway so I've got um, a three outputs powering my fridges here but uh, the first issue I had was like it, it was working fine for like three days and then last night it just all of a sudden just switched off like the actual AC output here just magically switched off and it's like well I've only been having it going like three days or whatever and it's already switched off once um, that doesn't vibe well for the long term uh, you know like viability of this thing so um, yeah that's not terrific at all sure the AC transfer switch would, supp would uh, supposedly cut in and fix um, that issue but that's kind of not the point you know um, the, the point is that the AC transfer switch would only cut in when the power fails anyway I've got my mixing portable scope here so that that's problem number one okay <laughs> second problem here is that um, when this was actually when when the timer would switch off okay and the mains input was disconnected I heard the fridge compressors go you know thump as in they had like briefly momentarily lost power and the fridge was actually recycling itself so yeah I, I suspect that this AC mains output here is not continuous when you actually switch input sources I believe it's actually discontinuous so I'm going to try and capture trigger this on the uh, scope here okay so what I've got set up here is uh, I'm triggering on a condition on a pulse I, I've got trigger type set to a uh, pulse less than uh, you know about nine milliseconds or something I had this sort of thing so it'll like if there's any like dropout in the waveform it should actually trigger on that okay so I'm going to put that on single sequence and I'm using my high voltage differential probe here and um, just for convenience sake I've just opened my uh, silicon chip energy meter here and I'm just um, probing in there it's just a convenient place to probe the mains um, there's nothing special about that I just don't how I forgot to bring a lead um, <laughs> from the lab that like a uh, death lead that actually had just bare ends on it so anyway that's just a <laughs> bodge way to probe it anyway here we go I'm going to uh, single sequence capture this and We'll see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect, so it's charging at the moment, 2.2 kilowatts. Oh, whoa, hey, see, why did it just drop? You, you saw that, right? That, that wasn't just me. It just dropped. Why did it just drop? Huh? It should be a continuous charging power. Like it should can draw a continuous amount of power. I don't know, maybe there was something inside, some mechanism inside that was... I don't know, it briefly checks the state of the battery and just disconnects, the, lowers the charger. I don't know. If you've got any idea, leave it in the comments. Anyway, I'm going to switch it off. So I'm going to switch like the mains input to here off. And let's see. Yep, yep, bingo, bingo, captured. Look at that. The output is not continuous. What uh, time period are on? 10 milliseconds per division. So you can see. Dropped out there, 10 milliseconds, took 20, 30 milliseconds before it started back up again. And bingo, that is why 
I am actually uh, getting like my fridges, like the compressors or whatever. I don't know really how fridges work, but like the, the compressors are like restarting or whatever. Um, and I can occasionally hear that hiccup um, because they're getting a disturbance in the mains there. This is not a continuous thing. Um, you can see that I'm getting uh, 234 volts RMS here. And uh, yeah, it's just dropping out. That should not happen. I would expect this output, right, because this comes from the internal inverter, you've seen the teardown, right, the internal inverter should continue to operate regardless of the source, whether the source at the moment is coming from the internal battery in here, right, and it's drawing all my three fridges, depends on which ones are on, whether or not they have the freezer compartments off or on, so this varies a lot anywhere from like zero um, to 40 to 100 to 300 to 800, something like that, depending on uh, where, because they're all asynchronous, essentially, all three fridges, um, so you don't know which one's going to be on at any one time or which, you know, freezer or fridge uh, uh, compressor, you know, thing is going to be on or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, if it's got like an auto defrost, the, these chest freezers generally don't have an auto defrost and this one doesn't, um, but I think the fridges have like an auto defrost cycle and yeah, that could take a X amount of power. But anyway, I was actually successfully for three days powering my fridges overnight um, after 4 p.m. it had just cut off and the battery would just last. It was just enough to last overnight until 9 a.m. the next morning. But yeah, I, I would hear the fridges actually, um, you know, the compressors start again. So it's got a drop out. So obviously, this thing is, is not a continuous inverter. When it uh, loses, well, when it switches the input, maybe it's, it's actually, phys well, we saw the teardown. There were physical relays in there. So it's probably relay switching the input sources. The input sources being the battery, the internal battery, the AC mains at the back, which, you know, has its own uh, charger uh, circuitry, right? Or the solar, or I, presumably the solar input um, as well. And this is not continuous. I would have liked to, I really want a continuous, you know, output, un, uninterrupted output. They should have electronic switching on the input to that. This should be seamless. You can't have, like, you know, your waveform dropping out like that. That's just... That, that is not good enough. Um, no. No, I don't want my fridges to, you know, who knows what, you know, start. I think some people in the comments have mentioned that, you know, if you start and stop the compressors a lot or if they lose power or whatever, then it would, um, yeah, it would shorten the life of the compressors. They can lock up or something. I don't know how, how compressors work. But, um, yeah, leave it in the comments um, if you're knowledgeable in that sort of field. But I don't, I don't like the idea of using this to power my fridges now. So I think I'm going to have to um, ditch this for powering the fridges and I'm going to have to go with, well, I was going to go with my hybrid inverter solution. I was going to replace my Sunny Boy inverter. Um, oh, I can show you that actually. Let's go outside. You've seen my Sunny Boy inverter before. Whoa, it's wet and miserable today. But there's my Sunny Boy inverter. There she is currently producing even the overcast rain it's still this is my old three kilowatt system it's still producing 770 watts there which is more than enough to like um you know power those uh that battery and um power the fridges or whatnot um you know re recharge a battery for the system anyway i was going to replace this is a three kilowatt inverter i was going to replace this with like a five kilowatt inverter um, and I was going to expand this solar on my pergola roof, add a four extra panels, so an extra string. This one does actually have two string inputs, but I'm already maxed out on the three kilowatts. So anyway, I was going to get a hybrid inverter. Um, there's various ones on the market uh, that can do this, and then I can plug in a battery to the hybrid inverter, and that will provide me, A, an emergency power output, and B, it will um, store energy during the excess energy during the day, and then uh, it will let me um, reuse that at night. It's not a full AC backup battery solution, but um, I don't need that because the power rarely fails here in Sydney. A lot of people ask me that. No, it's incredibly rare for the power to fail here. And if it does, it doesn't do it for very long. But anyway, I was gonna do that. So it looks like I'm gonna have to replace that with a hybrid inverter and a battery solution. And then if the power does fail, I'll still have an emergency output um, thing. And then I don't have to dick around with all sorts of, uh, you know, like isolating the house because the hybrid inverter will do the isolation on the house side here. It'll isolate all of this. So if the mains power fails, 
you want your inverter not to feed power back into the grid. So you want this, uh, so it'll automatically isolate the grid side of it, and then it'll have another output come into the battery, and then it'll have another emergency out power output, which then I can emergency power, you know, fridges and freezers and other things, if we do happen to get one of those rare power outages. So, yeah, um, so I'm gonna have to do that. So anyway, let me try that again, a single sequence that. Let's, let's see if it does it when it powers on. Oh, briefly, look, look, briefly there, right? So it is actually not, not as bad, not as bad. So I do think this will actually vary if I do it multiple times. So, but you can see it did glitch there. So this is certainly not a continuous thing. Um, and yeah, I could do more capture, um, like, because it hadn't actually started up at that point, I don't think. So, anyway, yeah, it's not a continuous output. So let me do that again. Power off. Charger off, boom, yep. Got exactly the same thing, exactly the same response there. That looks like, like input relay source switch in. You can see a part of the, part of the sine wave there. But yeah, it's, yeah, nah, it's, that's input relay switching. So there you go. That's mechanical relay switching instead of electronic switching. And I don't think that is suitable to power my fridges. But anyway, leave it in the comments uh, down below if you don't think I should use this. Um, I, I don't think I'm not getting the vibe from it anymore. Like it's fine for its intended purpose, which is like a portable, uh, you know, backup generator and stuff like that. You know, great. And you take it camping and you throw it in your trailer and you get the big solar panels and everything else. But for a home solution, like this, I no, I want, I, I don't want that switching like that, especially a couple of times a day when this thing is going to switch on, off and on a couple of times a day um, during charging. So anyway, um, that's disappointing. So I think I'm going to scrap that idea. Uh, I was all ready to install my transfer switch and everything, but I noticed these two issues there, and I don't know why it just like it switched off. Was that like an earth leakage detection thing? But I've never had it happen before with any of my fridges here and we've got earth leaky circuit breakers in the fuse box and yeah it's never I've never seen it happen um so and I've got an additional one on the uh, wall in fact this one um which I, I was actually uh using until yesterday um to power this and uh, yeah so I, I don't know but this yeah the, like the, the inverter was still working it still had like 60 percent battery or something and last night the actual output just switched off so I don't know so there's two issues there. That should have electronic switching. So, yeah, um, fine for its intended purpose, but just not, I don't think, suitable for what I want it to do. Anyway, let me know your thoughts. Catch you next time.